All right, guys, so welcome back to uh, part two of Parabolas. So we talked about conic sections, and we talked about how to uh, find pieces of the parabola, how to work with the algebra with it. So now this time what we're going to say is they're going to give us a couple pieces of the parabola, and it's up to us to find an equation for it. The way I like to do these is write down the pieces of information they gave us and even graph them and see if I can come up with a sketch of it even before I come up with the actual equation the graph. So like this one it says write an equation for a graph with a parabola with a focus of 2 comma 1 and a vertex of negative 5 comma 1. So again this is a, helps if you remember where things are at. So here it says write an equation for see here a focus at 2 comma 1 so here we go 1 2 comma 1 right here and I'm going to label it F and a vertex of negative 5 1 2 3 4 5 positive 1 and there's my vertex so from this knowing that so you have a vertex and a focus that are horizontal I have a parabola that's opening side to side. And more importantly, because my focus is on the inside of my parabola, my vertex is here, my parabola opens up sideways like this. Oh, even though it doesn't quite look like a vertex, it is. Okay. So, all right. So I go up and I take a look at my cheat sheet of, of formulas. And I see here that it's y minus, excuse me, y minus k squared is equal to 4p times x minus h. And so now, let's see what we know and what we don't know. Well, again, here, this is supposed to be my vertex. Well, hey, they give that to me. A vertex so I can fill that in y minus 1 squared is equal to 4 uh oh what's P P remember is the distance from the vertex to the focus that's what P is and I have to decide is it going to be positive or is it going to be negative how do you know that well, the ones that open side to side, if it opens to the right like this one does, P is positive. If it opens to the left, P is negative. So in this case, it's positive, and I count up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So P is equal to 7. Which means this is 7. And I have X minus H. H in this case is negative 5 minus a negative 5. And then I just clean this up. Y minus 1 squared stays the same. 4 times 7 is 28. X plus 5 is what I've got. There's my answer. This one is really kind of easy. All right. So let's take a look at the next one. See what we got going on there. This one says, hey, write an equation for a graph of a parabola with a vertex and a directrix. Okay, so there's a vertex and a directrix. So how do I pull this one off? So again, I start off by graphing. So here I got my graph, graph. I find three comma negative two. One, two, three comma negative two. Graph my point. And then my directrix is at y equals negative one. So here's my directrix. Y equals negative one. I guess I should make this be more at 2. It wasn't too high, so let me make that better. There we are. All right. So, again, since my directrix all right, is on the outside of my parabola, here's my vertex, right? So I know that everything is below it. So I know that it's going down. There's my parabola. So there's two things I know about that. First one is because it's going down, my, the P is negative. Okay, P is negative, so that's one thing I know. And two, uh, it's X is squared, right? Because it's the function version. So X is squared. So again, I go up and grab my general function, X 
minus, excuse me, k, excuse me, h squared is equal to 4p y minus k. So I just fill in the pieces that I know. So here we go. x minus h, the x coordinate there is 3. Squared is equal to 4 times p. Well, well what's my p value? My p value is right here from my vertex of the directrix. Let's get a different color. Vertex of the directrix, what is that? That's a height there of 1. Oh, okay, so I'm just going to put 1, right? No, because again, like I told you earlier, it's downward facing, so it's negative 1. And y minus negative 2. And I just clean this up a little bit. The x minus 3 is all good and stays the same. 4 times the negative 1 is the negative 4. y plus 2. And there's my answer. Again, fairly straightforward, fairly easy to do. Let's go on to see what's next. Because the next one is not so easy to do. Now let's, let me rephrase that. It's not so straightforward. So this one here, part C, is asking me to go ahead and write down here. It says write an equation for a graph of a parabola that has a focus of negative 1, 7. So again, here we go. I have a negative 1, 7. So let me go here. Here we are, negative 1. I'm going to say that that's 7. There's my dot. That's my focus. Focus. And opens up and contains the point 3, 7. Opens up, contains the point 3, comma 7. So here I am over here. 1, 2, 3, same 7. So here's what do I know. Well... I don't know what P is. I don't know what my vertex is. So if I'm going to try and draw this, I do know my vertex is someplace down here. I don't know where exactly. I'm just going to make general jot. Maybe it's there. I don't know. But I do know it, it comes out, and there's a point on my graph that hits it right there, and I know it's going to look something like this. Oops, that was kind of bad. Let's try that again. That's a little bit better. So Because I know it opens up. That was the key part right there, opens up. So I knew my vertex is below the focus. So I'm going to write down my general formula right here for, right, for an, uh, a, gra a parabola opening up. So it's x minus h squared is equal to a 4p y minus k. Now I'm going to take what I know and I'm going to see whether or not I can figure something out. So, here's a little trick. So, what is focus? So, again, I take a look at my cheat sheet, right? And what I know is that my focus, right, is equal to the x coordinates the same, so it'd be h but my y coordinate is different than my vertex. And remember, so it's just k plus p. So what do I know? Here's what I know. I know h is negative 1. So I know h is negative 1. What else do I know? I know that k plus p is equal to 7. I'm going to write that down. Okay, let's see what else I can get into here. Huh, this contains a point, so this is very important. What does that mean? That means that when I input a 3 into my formula, when I, get, when I take 3 and put it in for x, my answer for y is 7. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say x is 3, and I'm going to plug that in there. 3 minus h. What's h? h is always a negative 1, so I'm going to put that in there. Squared equals 4. I don't know what p is. I'm going to keep that there. 
Y, what is Y? Y is going to be 7 minus K. That's the one we're stuck on. But what's going to be K? And that's where I have this right here. What can I do? I can solve for K. I can say, you know what? K is equal to 7 minus P. You know why this is really cool? 7 minus P. Here's what makes this really cool. I have an equation here and only one unknown. Here I have an equation with three unknowns. That's too much. By plugging everything in, I have one unknown. I can find everything I need. So here we go. 3 minus, that's going to be 4 squared is 16 is equal to a 4p times, well, 7 minus a 7. Okay, I distribute 7 minus 7 is 0. They cancel out, but the negative 7 in P is a regular P. And then I go ahead and say 16 is equal to, divide by each side, uh, uh, 4P squared. Divide by 4, take the square root. I get plus or minus 2 is equal to P. I have to make the choice. Is P positive or is P negative? And again, that's where the opens up comes in handy. Opens up tells me that P is going to be positive. So it's going to be the positive 2. And now I can write this out. Okay, because I know that my formula now is X minus H. We already knew what H was, the negative 1. Squared equals 4 times P, which we said was 2, times y minus k, but what came out to be k? k is 7 minus p, which we found out to be 2, so k is equal to 5. Clean this up a little bit, we get x plus 1 squared is equal to 8 times y minus 5. That was a little bit of algebra to do. Not a whole lot, a lot of steps. Hard algebra? No. A lot of steps? Yes. Keep this. You're going to use it to help you solve more problems. Okay? Next, we have one more thing here. Okay, so the question becomes, okay, we talked about earlier about the plane crossing at different points, but then there are some times in which the plane crosses at just the perfect spot. It creates something that's called a degenerate conic. Okay? So on this one here, if my plane, okay, so in this one, if my plane happens to cross just the intersection point of the two cones, it makes a point. Intersection point there at the two cones makes a dot, and that's what cancels. It makes a point. So that's the cross section of what it is. So it's not going to be a circle. It's not going to be an ellipse. It makes a point. Okay. And that's as long as the plane slope is less than okay, the generator slope. Remember, that's what made an ellipse, which is why this is a degenerate ellipse. This one here is called degenerate parabola. Because what happens if my, again, this is a, a parabola, remember, is when the plane slope was equal to the generator slope. And what happens if it were just to touch the edge of the cone? Touch the edge of the generator. It would make a line. Ooh. Last but not least, this is when here a degenerate hy hyperbola. Remember, a hyperbola was when the plane slope was greater than the generator slope. Okay, but at some point it becomes perpendicular to the basis. So in this one, when the plane is perpendicular to the base, what happens? I get a degenerate hyperbola. That's what it's called down here. And what do you get as your degenerate hyperbola? 
you get intersecting lines like this. So that's what your graph would look like. Your graph on the degenerate parabola would be just a straight line. And your graph of the general ellipse is just a point. Okay? Now that's all I got for you. Look forward to seeing you guys on uh, the next time I see you, and we'll have a worksheet for you guys to go through. Bye.